Hey everybody, this is Bill Smith with Privacy Fight Club. And uh, of course, I've got my main man over here, John Singleton, coming to you from an undisclosed location, an undisclosed sunny location. <laughs> he has that beautiful tan <laughs> frozen north, and which is why the uh, the softest light will bounce off of it. So but we're here with, with our new friend, Vince. And Vince has an incredible story. You know, we, John, you and I have, have spent many hours um, discussing with, with clients on, on air, doing interviews. You certainly have done hours and on hours uh, on end of interviews talking about how people come to you with collection issues. People come to you, they've, they've, they've got served uh, a lawsuit, and now they've got to figure out what to do. And uh, so many people panic. They, try to, they, they, they cross their fingers and hope they can get Chapter 7. Uh, yeah. dive headlong into that. And sometimes they don't end up in chapter seven. They end up forced into something else, which is a shame. Mm. But Vince, <laughs> Vince here, uh, has a story to tell us today. That is, that is really a, a fantastic success story using your methods, John. So welcome Vince. Welcome John. It's, it's really great to talk to both of you today. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Good to be here. Yeah. Vince, do you want to, do you want to explain, uh, sure. you know, what, okay. What happened? Well, uh, as a, a about July last year, um, I got I got sued. I got served papers. So, guy came to my door. Actually, probably I'm in a gated community, so I think he waited for the the gate right before the gates would close. And I was home. Got I usually work late, so I got home. Was the gates were still open? He got to my my home, banged on the door, and he served me these papers. So, obviously, uh, it was it was completely unexpected. And first reaction was I was pretty 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 shocked. You know, didn't. Didn't know this was coming. Didn't know that was going to come that day. Mm. Um, and I'm being sued by some attorneys. And I, uh, the, these attorneys are collecting, um, are collecting for a loan that I took when I had a business up in New York. So I paid a good chunk of that loan back, but wasn't able to pay everything. So they, end, so the the bank hired these attorneys, um, and the attorneys first sent me some letters, and I I'll tell you the truth, I ignored them. Um, thinking that if I ignore them, they might might possibly go away, but it, I so I kind of knew something was going to eventually happen. So um, so eventually, like I said last year, I got sued uh, or I got served these papers, and as a result, um, I figured okay, I need to start dealing with this. And so for the first day or two, um, I started uh, just going on the internet researching. Okay, I guess I got to hire an attorney, and realize okay. A, an attorney is going to cost money. They charge anywhere from I don't know $120 an hour to up to $400, depending on on what how good of an attorney you get. So this is going to cost money to fight. And so it took me a few days to get my 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 head wrapped around, and get ready to spend some money, mm. <laughs> and and get that money somewhere to and get ready to fight. Get yeah. ready to fight this. So I interrupt uh, really, so that, um, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Uh, you can give a, a broad range, but but roughly, what was the uh, the debt in question that you were getting? Oh yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned that. Well, uh, the loan uh, was for twenty five thousand dollars that I took out, and I paid a good chunk of that back. Um, but then, with the attorney's fees, sending letters and stuff, it, it got up to like close to thirty thousand and plus as they continue to work on it. So <clears throat> it's not a small amount, <clears throat> to, yeah. and nothing that they're, they decided to. Ignore. Uh, this was an unsecured yes so this is this is the, the just for a little bit of, of context here mm -hmm. so you, you have this loan in new york you move on with your life you're not even in new york anymore you're you're somewhere else whole new day and now this lawsuit comes and the idea is you you had some trouble you weren't able to pay it and so now they're saying okay so we're entitled to ruin his life <laughs> right. <laughs> well, notice that it was a business debt right? here for you. No, yes. Notice it was a business debt. So let's look about look at where it originated from. Yeah. So you would think the business would be liable for the debt. Why are you being sued? Because it's not a business debt. It's a consumer debt that was written with the name of your business on it, but it was underwritten with your name and date of birth and SSN. So it's actually a personal debt, and they made you the guarantor. That's how it was underwritten. So when they say it's a business debt, typically it's not unless you deliberately created credit for your business through Dun & Bradstreet and went out of your way and applied and did not use your SSN and date of birth. That's when you know it's a business debt and you're not the guarantor. So that, so see how they kind of stick you, like Frank says, I mean, they just, they just move this along. 
Yeah. And maybe your business is dissolved or who knows what's going on, but it doesn't matter because they're just going to sue you personally. Yeah. Right. So you have an unsecured debt. They're mm -hmm. going to make it secured. Everybody loves unsecured. Yeah. Everybody says, oh, unsecured, unsecured, unsecured. Well, you're one lawsuit away from that being secured. And what are they going to go after? They're going to go after your wages. They're going to do direct uh, garnishment of bank accounts. And then they're going to mm -hmm. um, uh, attach liens on your property and so uh it becomes it becomes secure pretty secure <laughs> yeah once they once they record a judgment it, it's again it'll encumber your equity and property and then they can use it to take your cash flow yeah. or whatever that is so um so yeah you're right you're, you're looking at a thirty thousand dollar claim uh by the creditor now this wasn't even a debt collector this was the actual bank mm -hmm. and uh that if you hired an attorney it would Gosh, what would happen? I don't care what attorney you hire. It doesn't matter if you pay more money. They're not better attorneys because it's just the same piece of paper with the same words on it. A different attorney is not better. <laughs> All he's going to do is get you into a payment plan. <laughs> I mean, to, there's only there's two ways of doing that. You can do it before you go to trial or after. If you go to trial, you're still going to lose with an attorney and you're going to pay way more money uh, for his fees. So it depends on how that attorney gets his money, how his right. practice is structured as to how he wants to bill you. Because he'll he'll say things to you to get you to go to trial, where some attorneys won't. Maybe they have a high volume and they're just happy to go to you know settlement, 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 and they make their money that way. And then some attorneys, they can talk to you and they can feel like they can fill you out and see if you're the type of person that would pay $10,000. And if you are, he'll probably take you to trial. It's just like anything else. It's not about you. It's about what the attorney can make. So they basically size you up to see how much yes. you have. And then they put together a plan to take. <laughs> yeah. And the only reason that it makes sense to try to defend the case is if you have risk. If you have exposure to the creditor where the creditor could eventually take your cash flow or property rights. So the trick here, the win, the punchline is to remove those property rights, like your real estate interest you change those uh you know you can move those out of your name you can put a lien to encumber your equity you can um manage your bank account so that those accounts are not subject to a levy there's all kinds of ways of doing that mm -hmm. so in this case what i what i like to do is look at your risk we talked about that remember mm -hmm. first thing we on the first phone call okay let's talk about what your risk is and who's going to do that if you call an attorney the attorney's going to say well, that's the creditor. You're going to and end up having to pay. So what do you think you can afford to pay on a monthly basis? That's how attorneys talk to people. And my <laughs> first question to you is, if they win, what can they take from you? And then we make a list. And then we say, okay, let's take this out of your name. Let's move this. Let's do that. Let's reorganize this. And now the answer to that question is nothing. And then it doesn't matter what happens in the court. Mm. But just the same, let's tell the court that the case is the, the, the complaint that they wrote is legally insufficient. So you remember that one, right? I certainly do. Let's pick up the story. So what, what yeah. happened next? Because we're getting into this yeah. here, which yep, is pretty well, yep, spoiler. Well, everything that, that John just, just <laughs> mentioned. Yeah, I, well, just to take a step back, I, uh, I watched YouTube videos of what Sarah Westall, and I saw that um, you know, she, she had interviews with John and I actually remembered that, hey, there was this really smart guy that talked about cryptos, lawsuits and protecting yourself. I said, okay, let me let me go go check him out. And, or I did some research, looked at the archives and saw a couple of his YouTube videos and watched them over and over just to try and <clears throat> get an idea of what, 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 what's going on here. And then those videos, John explains that this is a system mm. that's in process that that uses you that is used yeah. to, to get money out of you. And so I went to his website, I set up an appointment just to talk with him thinking, okay, you know what, instead of going to the, you know, I was close to going you know, calling attorneys and going to them, I said, let me just give John a call, see if he's free, maybe he can help me. And so I set up an, an appointment online. And then with within a few days, I remember, <clears throat> I, I, I had that appointment with John. He called me. <clears throat> um, and when I explained to him what was going on, the first thing he did was he laughed. <laughs> and he wouldn't, didn't laugh at me, but he just laughed at the whole process and system. And believe it or not, when he did that, that gave me a sense of calm because it, it was a sincere laugh with, from a person that understood what was going on. And then he continued to explain like he just did on what was happening and what, what they were doing to me and to everybody. And so 
through that call, he, he explained why I'm getting sued, the background before it, and how to fight it, and how his what he's gone through in his own life and fighting <clears throat> other lawsuits. People have sued him and how he's helped so many other people in similar, even worse conditions that, that I've been and I'm in now. And so um so when he uh when I explained to him this this case, he was able to look up my case online and he he saw okay the he recognized the attorney he said oh these guys are probably debt collectors i think i recognize the name i mean everything he did was really great in showing that he just understood this whole this whole process of of extracting and and suing people extracting money and suing people yeah and that, um, that's very helpful so so you you established and i i love what you said about how he laughed because <laughs> Uh, you know, I've I've been on many phone calls with people in your situation, and man, you know, to hear the the stress and the tension, and people get sick. I mean, John, you yeah. know, uh, yes, we've been helped people. You and I talked on a, a recent video where where you were helping people with health issues because uh, it's just destroyed them. They they actually start to yeah get diseased over it, and so mm -hmm. when you're uh, an expert. You're welcome, John. Uh, when you hear an expert chuckle at the situation, they're either the biggest jerk ever, <laughs> right? Or they know something very, very good news. Uh, so that's usually my favorite part of the phone call when John laughs at the situation, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> right, then we move on to solving it. And, uh, and let's uh, let's look at the anatomy of this, though. Okay, so you've got a creditor as represented by an attorney. He's not represented by a law firm. Law firms cannot represent anybody. So be clear about that. And there's an important distinction. So when you see law firm and the letterhead and all that, just look for the individual attorney who signed the complaint or signed the letter. Most of the time, the attorneys don't sign letters, but they have to sign the complaint. And sometimes they try to hide the signature and hide their identity behind the name of the law firm. And it's illegal. It's actually a crime for a law firm to represent anybody in court. That's what most people don't know. But here's the cool thing. A creditor is not penalized under the consumer uh, credit or consumer debt protection laws, like the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Creditors are not included in that, but law firms are and attorneys are. So you can actually sue the attorney and sue the law firm separately for damages just because they have your name Wow. for no other reason. I don't care if you owe the debt or not. Mm -hmm. So what we did in, in Vince's case is we filed a motion to dismiss. And mm -hmm. now correct me if I'm wrong, Vince, didn't the the creditor include a copy of the debt instrument, which is unusual, but yeah, the he, copy, did. He, um, yeah. He, he had some of these, these exhibits are here in the back of copies of tenure like, like billing ago. statements and then the credit yeah. agreement, right? Because yep. a, a lot of times a debt collector, a third party won't have the credit agreement, which is kind of cool because it gives you more latitude to argue the case, but they flat out had it and they had a copy of what looked to be your signature, right? Correct. On the instrument. Perfect mm -hmm. example. Okay. So here's what we said. We filed a motion to dismiss, and this was in Florida. And a, dis a motion to dismiss basically says that you admit everything in the pleading, but that the you can you can then argue that the the pleading is insufficient. Even if you admit everything, you're saying that the court doesn't have jurisdiction to hear the case. So it's really powerful, even though you have to admit the allegations. So we said in there that admitting all the allegations, the problem is that what was alleged in the complaint. Okay, in the complaint, it alleged that there's a here's a, you know Exhibit A is the debt instrument, right? And sure enough, there's a copy of a credit agreement where it looks like your signature or a signature on there. We said that that was not the debt instrument. Mm -hmm. So we said that the allegations in the complaint conflicted with the exhibits because it's not evidentiary. It's just a copy of a piece of paper and that signature is not a signature it yet. It has to be authenticated with evidence in a proceeding and just a pleading by itself, just the, the complaint that's originally filed doesn't do it. It just creates a presumption that you're correct. So when you come in there with a motion to dismiss and say, okay, fine, if I admit that I owe this, but your pleading is insufficient, now we're talking about the pleading. We're not talking about the debt. You should never talk about the debt if you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. So so basically, that's what, that's what we did, right? Yep, exactly. exactly. And now, were you excited and happy to go to that hearing on the, on your motion to dismiss? Uh, uh, tell you the truth, since it would be my first time going in, <laughs> I wasn't super excited but i was uh, i was confident because yeah. okay. we set up a call right okay day, a day or two before and you sent me a, a, you sent me a whole bunch of notes uh first we talked about yeah. what to expect 
what you should say, get, and 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 then you were nice enough to send me notes on everything we mm -hmm. talked about. And then before the before going in, I reviewed I reviewed those notes mm -hmm. and then and then went to the went to the hearing. Did the attorney yes. respond? I forget. Did, did he did he follow a conference call? Yeah, he did. Res he did respond. Um, but like he, in writing, he did he send a, a, a response to the motion? I forget. Yeah, the, the day before the, ah. the, the day before the hearing. So I he so I didn't obviously have it. And then when I was in court, um, the judge said, oh, he did respond because we were going to argue that the attorney didn't respond. So please dismiss uh, right. this. And it turns out he responded the day before. Remember, I told you that would happen. You did I, mention that. So. I said, it's possible the attorney will drop in the mail the day before the hearing. So you get his response the day after. The, that's what they do. Yep. They just okay. do stuff like so. So then it's not part of the record at the hearing. And and you could have argued that, but it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. But you could have argued, well, wait a minute. If he mailed it deliberately the day before the hearing, isn't that in bad faith? And oh, yeah. that's not even part of this proceeding, this hearing today. And so therefore, there is no response to my motion to dismiss. It's uncontested and I want it granted. Mm -hmm. That way, I don't, I'm don't. i not even talking about the motion now. I'm just right. talking about the fact that there was no objection to it. Right. Yeah. Yep. So so what did the judge say in spite of all that so in the end? In spite of all that, the judge said, okay, I'll give you seven more days. There were some issues with his filing. For some reason, the judge thought it, he first thought it would be, it should have been filed in small claims court. Okay. For the amount, but he did something wrong, so he he had to refile. He had seven days to refile, and then I have to respond to that. So he granted the motion to dismiss. He did. Yes, uh, it was granted. This is important and... because the judge can grant the motion, which means you won the case. But he gave the other side permission to change the pleading to cure the deficiency. Okay. That's what that's what it was. So that's it's a it's an order to amend the pleading within so many days, seven days. Mm. In which case, when the, when the new amended uh, complaint is filed, which it has been filed, we're supposed to address that. Either we answer that or we do another motion to dismiss. Right. So, so what do we discuss after the hearing? Uh, we, well, you're, again, after telling you what happened, you, you came up with another uh, draft of the motion to dismiss. And um, I'm in the process of getting that signed, notarized, and filed with the clerk this week. Yeah, do that. Do that quickly. Um, but what we what what we are expecting is the so-called amended complaint to be the same complaint that was originally filed, with like cosmetic changes. Right. So, because <laughs> the problem is, attorneys are using forms to file pleadings, and if they have to rewrite a form, it's very difficult because all the allegations on the form are perfect. I mean, they've been they spent thirty years coming up with these forms, and they they match. They satisfy the jurisdictional criteria. And when they're ordered to amend it, they don't know what to do. You can't say more than the facts you've already alleged. They're complete facts. So now what's he going to do? So what did he do? He just took the old complaint and then refiled it. And I think he upped the charges or changed the amount. So, <laughs> so he, he asked for more money this time. I, that's so that, that amends the complaint. That didn't amend anything, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, so all the exhibits are the same. I, I went through line by line the other day. <laughs> Everything's pretty much the same, except I think he had an error in referring to one of the exhibits incorrectly. Sure. Yeah, okay. So I think this the time. Material. Like that. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> so now, now here's the issue before the court. First of all, it was never about the debt. It was about the insufficiency of the pleading. Now it's not about the insufficiency of the pleading so much as it is the plaintiff's failure to comply with the court's order. Ah, okay. That's more important because if you're a judge and you have an attorney who you ordered him to do something and he didn't do it, or he's trying to pull a fast one, like in this case, mm -hmm. you want to bring that to the judge's attention. Say the plaintiff failed to comply with this court's order dated such and such and failed by failing to amend the pleading. You have the identical pleading mm -hmm. in substance. It's the same thing. So again, <laughs> nothing's been cured. And once again, even more reason to grant the new motion to dismiss. Right. And and do you care what happens? I mean, basically you beat him, but even if you get this, if this motion is granted again, mm -hmm. uh, and let's say it's granted with prejudice, which means they can never sue you again. What they'll do is the creditor will find another, um, or they'll sell it to a debt collector, or they'll find another law firm next year and they'll get, they'll file it again, a new case, and they'll get a different judge and they'll probably get a different outcome. That's just, that's how the system works. So, so do you care? Not really. Just, yeah. just as long, especially since you've already 
guided me on what to do. So if it does happen again, it's just going through the system and, and responding. Yeah, I mean, if, if I were you, even though you know how to do this, it's, it's a nuisance to waste your time to go there because your risk is gone. So what's the point really other than learning? It's good to do that. I like everybody to do it, to go through that. It's, it's stressful to go through that, but it's the last stress you're going to have in situations like that, I think anyways. Yeah. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. So you don't need to participate anymore. They can yeah. do whatever they want. And That's, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. There's no risk. And they'll have a piece of paper that will say they have a claim on your property and there's no property to take until the debt expires, which it will. And then it's gone. Yeah, that, that that's one thing I want to highlight, which is why I pop my head back in here. Um, is is that win or win or lose of this case? I mean, it's it's cool when when you can stick it to them right in court, and they have to leave you alone because the court the, the judge says no yeah. deal. That's wonderful. We love that. That's a lot of fun. But it's not that important that that happen. That's right. Because you've been put in a position now where you have and and john feel free to jump in if i say something stupid but you have all the protections of chapter seven without any of the burden of chapter seven yeah which, chapter seven is if you qualify for chapter seven then that just means you're uncollectible which is the goal the goal <laughs> so why would you follow chapter seven when you're already uncollectible mm -hmm. and, and and you risk doing a chapter seven you risk the judge ordering it converted to a chapter 13 and you cannot dismiss from chapter 13 and chapter 13 is a payment plan there's no way around it. Harness payment plan. Yeah. 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 And so what's funny is some people, so, okay, almost every case, just like your your case, Vince, is, is like this one way or the other, because in the end, the creditor gets a judgment. Very few, like one out of a thousand where we'll get a dismissal and it'll stay like that forever. Okay. okay. So people will search my name on the internet and they'll, they'll try to find cases and they'll look around and they'll say, oh, you see, he had them file this and they lost. <laughs> But that doesn't show what happened because what we really did is make you uncollectible. So you're not paying anything. So it's about the money. It's not about if someone got a judgment against you. Right. So yeah. w whether you win or lose the case, it's whether or not you can, they can take anything from you. Make the paper worthless. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so just, just, I didn't get a chance to add in, by the way, I probably wanted to mention it earlier. If you remember, I told you how I was researching attorneys and, um, mm -hmm. One of the best feelings was when I was speaking to John on that first call, um, he pulled up my case and he said, oh, you know, all you have to do is file a motion to dismiss and this is what you do. I said, okay, great. I, that that sense of relief came upon me where, you know, now I, I have a way to fight and battle this. And then John said, oh, wait a second. This is, I have a document similar that you could file. So he pulled up that document, took my case's information, put it in. And he said, oh, I'm not even going to charge you. <laughs> yeah. And, right. and sent me that that motion to dismiss, which I then took and filed. And I have to tell you, after doing after speaking with John and and having him do that, you know, remember, I was going I was ready. I was in a state of mind, ready to pay an attorney thousands to mm -hmm. this point where I can I feel confident now to fight this on my own. <clears throat> so I just just wanted to say this. This was it was it was great talking to John and and I really enjoyed after speaking with them going through this and and learning about yeah. i appreciate you saying that yeah and um so the only thing that, to keep track of uh on a case when you know someone has a judgment against you you already know it's uncollectible hopefully in most cases is if some point in the future which rarely happens where the creditor will ask you discovery questions it's called post-judgment discovery so if, if you just check your mail to see if you get a notice of a list of questions that you have to answer or if there's a notice where it's telling you you have to go meet somebody at an office and answer questions under oath it's called a deposition or okay. interrogatories and these are called post-judgment discovery questions so if you get something like that again you probably won't very likely you will not if you get something like that you do have to answer those questions but the nice thing about it is when you're already protected your assets are protected and income is protected you can answer all the questions as long as you tell the truth it doesn't matter what you tell them yeah oh, okay. they can't take anything yeah and what's their goal from for that to 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 go back to court and file another suit or to amend the suit? Or... No, what they would do is if they discovered assets that they didn't know about, like they couldn't get through a credit sweep uh, or looking at your credit file or an SSN sweep on the national database for all the banks, if they couldn't see something to take to swipe your bank account, they'll call you in for questions or send you questions in the mail. And you might tell them uh, about a bank account 
that you have access to or rights over that they didn't discover. And then they would go ask the judge for permission to take that money. Okay. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so that's why you, you want to be able to answer questions like the way we set things up are so that if you're asked, um, do you have cash in the bank? You can, you can say no, even if you're a high net worth person. Because we made it so where it's not your money. It's, uh, you know, structures. You're not lying. Mm -hmm. You're not lying. You don't. Exactly. It'd be like if you work for a big company, the big company's money is not yours. Mm -hmm. So that's an example. You could just say, well, no, I don't, I don't have any money in the bank. I have a bank account. The average balance is $10. Mm -hmm. Or I don't have a bank. I like, to tell I like to tell them you have a bank account because if you tell them no, then they want to check further, right? Right. That <laughs> yeah, raises so. their radar. <laughs> Vince, you mentioned earlier, I think this was before we were on air, but, uh, and I won't get too into business, but at one point you were on a church board that had legal issues. Uh, correct. I, and, I've been, I'm oh, sorry. And at, at just, just to make the point, um, you know, if the church board had lost that lawsuit, that doesn't mean they were going to take your money because right. you were representing the church. Yep. And it's, it's actually, John, it's funny because that is literally the exact example that I've used. <laughs> years with people said, Hey, if your church had a debt and you got sued, you might have to go to court, but it's not your money. So there, there's nothing that, you know, they can't take your money for the church just because you're a member there. Right. Or you're on the board there. Right. And well, they couldn't, and they, like in your case, a per individual personal case, debt, so that it's they not, couldn't sue the company mm -hmm. for your personal debt or attach the company's money for your personal debt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and basically, you know, just to use that as an illustration, um, John's helping you get in a position where all the money you handle is unattached to you in that way, yeah. which, which is a great way to be. It's, it's totally legal yep. and it's very wise. So with that, unless you have anything else to throw in, Vince, we're just going to tell people where to go so that they too <laughs> can have access to, to this kind of information. So thank Vince. This is a great interview. It's, it's really nice. You know, I know John has worked very hard uh, to make this, this information available to people and to help people such as yourself. So it's really cool to hear from somebody, you know, and you're giving us your perspective from the start. You know, you hear him on Sarah Westall. It's like, it's just, it's, um, it's sort of our fantasy of how people will get helped. <laughs> you know, oh, I heard about that guy and now, <laughs> and now he helps me. It's really, it's really cool to hear it uh, straight from your lips, uh, Vince. And so we really appreciate you taking the time to talk about it. Now, if you, my friends, <laughs> <laughs> would like to learn about uh, the, 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 the resources and the methods that, that John has developed. He has a new website, privacyfightclub.com, and uh, he does webinars very regularly. So if you just head over to privacyfightclub.com, you'll be able to register for his next live webinar where you can ask him questions about your own case. Uh, there's also memberships at Privacy Fight Club, and one of the things that comes with our memberships is access to the Slack chat where uh, John is in there, I'm in there, uh, as well as a whole community of very cool people uh, like Vince, who uh, were also not interested in paying the man. <laughs> <laughs> Just because the man in central banks and their, uh, their wacky money that they pull out of thin air and then sue you for later. <laughs> Uh, so Vince, good job, man. Uh, you, you did the right thing, and uh, we're, we're all uh, we're all impressed by how you handled this. You didn't you didn't freak out and go on a, some government enforced payment plan. Uh, you you handled it great. And so, if you're interested watching at home, if you want to want to learn more about that, go over to Privacy Fight Club. One of our webinars, even better, join one of those memberships that John has offered, and it's basically great education. So you can learn all of the stuff that that Vince learned, and uh, learn how to do this for yourself as well as be able to interact with other people who have done it right there in that community Slack room. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you, John. Thank you, Vince. This thanks guys. I knew this was fun. I said this was going to be a fun one because we love yeah. it. Really <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks everybody for watching privacyfightclub.com. Take care.